welcome back to the Bourbon Buddies. Uh, today, something a little different. What do we got, buddy? Well, buddy, we got a nice little treat on the table. I don't Is this know if you can see that. It's kind no, of a it's, table. I don't know if they're going to be able to see it at all. You might have to hold it up. Can you see this? Ah, my back! So we got a cool topic today. We're going to talk about this awesome whiskey. Which we hope actually, it's awesome. Yeah, actually, you're right. We've never had we're it. We're here to have it, so we're hoping it's <laughs> awesome. Now, this is George Washington Straight Rye Whiskey from Mount Vernon, which is really interesting. And um, It's the only place you can get it, from what I understand. That's crazy. That's limited. It's very and, limited. You know, we, we've talked about limited and hard to get stuff before. We're going to crack this thing open and drink this it. This is limited, limited. Yeah. Plus, I think we're just going to talk about the founding fathers a little bit just have a discussion about uh, how whiskey links to the beginnings of oh, the yeah. country yeah it was a big deal yeah yeah it really was so yeah come join us little shout out i guess is my sister picked this up for me she was out at mount vernon and uh, saw it picked it up so it was very generous thank you very much so, for allowing us to try this i don't want to spill it don't dare spilling the nectar don't oh now this is a straight rye. Thank you, sir. And I don't have a lot of experience with rye. No. I, I've dabbled in it a little bit, try it here and there, but I'm not a big, but I guess this was more common early it, on. It was, and rye was it. I mean, bourbon really didn't, wasn't really a thing until um, really the 1800s. It's all started with rye in, in this country. It all started in PA and um, Maryland. Shout out to PA because that's where we're from. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we were kind of um, talking about this a little bit is that back in the day, they did not, and when I say back in the day, we're talking about 18th century, is that they would drink whiskey not aged in oak because that's not what they did. They would just distill it. It was clear, just like how you have your white whiskeys today. Yep. And um, it was rye based. I think with the Pennsylvania rye, which was what rye grows really well in PA and a little bit in the northern areas, and they would mainly just do rye in their mash bill. Um, just straight rye. This whiskey, the George Washington one, that little guy right there. Uh. So the mash bill is 60% rye, 35% corn, and then the rest malted barley. And they found that recipe at the site. I don't know if they were like, archaeologists were like digging around and they're able to find i don't know if it was on a, in a book or whatever yeah you know, i would think it was probably written down somewhere had to be right unless they found like the perfect percentage yeah of the, of the, yeah <laughs> they found like a bowl of, like oh they're like oh this must be the secret mash bill which which is with, like, a, with a wood sign or it says secret mash bill <laughs> secret mash now they did age this one two years they do make an unaged mm -hmm. and they make one aged four so that's like a pre they're what they call it, a premium. Um, it'd be interesting to try an unaged because apparently, from what I heard, a lot of times they were just using up grain. They didn't want it to go to waste, anything like that. So they would like distill it and they'd make sure they used everything they had. I wonder how how harsh it, some, some of them probably were. I'm yeah. sure they didn't fire them off at real high proof points, but you never know. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you get accustomed to things, you know? You but do. I can imagine some like, some white rye, like being, it could get fiery. It get fiery. I know Thistle Finch out of Lancaster, PA, they have a, a white rye, an unaged rye. And I, I, I think I gave you a little bit one time. It does sound familiar, yeah. So their mash bill is a Pennsylvania rye. So they have, I believe, malted and unmalted rye in their mash bill. I don't know if that and wheat. in on that. And wheat, I think. See, I can they see wheat, wheat being actually a good thing. Yeah, they throw wheat in there. It's kind of like trying to, to round it out a little bit. Whereas this is that whole Virginia kind of 60% rye isn't crazy. It's not crazy how I know. What was going on about the stills, how they would oh, actually wood, cook? Uh, yeah, they how were they wood-fired still. stills. Got it. So, and I guess that's still what they're doing today. That's so I, cool. I believe. Is that? That's it, what it seems like. It yeah. like, yeah. Which is crazy in one way. Because I can see, I mean, I know like 1792 just coal fired. Yeah. But I can see like the difficulty of keeping a still at the right temperature with wood and having to constantly monitor it. Because it's not like a, like a gas fired one where like you can set, set, dial the temperature in 
and literally on a dial and kind of tune it in and then right. that's where you run it where wood fire i could see being you know much more labor intensive to and, and just monitoring it constantly so it doesn't get too hot or you know not hot enough like getting it that at that right temperature i could see that being a lot of work yeah it's got to be a bear just keeping it consistent yeah yeah that's what i'm thinking but i mean when you think about it though he uh washington ended up being like big time back in the day making whiskey like a big whiskey yeah. producer yeah so when you think about living that kind of life like he's all he was guy was always up to shit you know, I mean, he like was he's always, always up to something. He really was. He was kind of one of the founding fathers that I don't know. He he did. He wanted to kind of have his own life. He didn't want to be always involved in the public affairs of things. Right. And he I wanted think, some like privacy and yeah. a personal life outside of yes. And he, he, leading armies and being president and all kinds of like precisely baller stuff. He wanted to be live a quiet life as mm -hmm. well. And making a pile of whiskey. Yeah, I think oh, he's I need like, some downtime. <laughs> I think he's the largest producer of whiskey back in back in his day. At seventeen, that's, that's so when they claim late seventeen hundreds. Yeah, yeah. So I think this was after he was president that he started firing up whiskey. What a, what a um, good retirement gig. Yeah, I'm just gonna produce whiskey. Produce whiskey on my my nice place. Yeah. So uh, this is kind of cool because it says two years you know rye but it's dark it is it's got a lot of color now see i don't i wasn't there and i haven't really looked too deep into it i don't want to like i sometimes i, I want to try some before i research it right you know what i mean then i don't go in with any sort of like ideas or could be swayed I mean, so i don't know if they're using like smaller barrels or you know i don't i don't know what they're up to right but man that is a really rich color that's a, i mean and it's it's got a great nose on it it does it's it's if, if you like i'm getting like mapley like maple candy. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. And here again, I'm not I'm not a wow. big rye drinker. But I've noticed with some that I've tried, it really depends like rye can express itself in several different ways. It doesn't like it's not always like spicy. Like sometimes I have one that were like super maple. Yeah. A lot of maple coming through on it. Yeah. And of course I've had some with that kind of like spice and that bite to it, but it's kind of like an apple. Like apple, spicy apple. Um, oh, like a cinnamon apple kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I would never ring this as being a two-year-old. No. Rye whiskey. Off the I, nose, anyway. Yeah, I, let's get it. Let's get it on this. Yeah. Cheers. Bro. Oh wow. That's got like peanut butter going on on that. I'm getting like Reese's peanut butter cup, like that aftertaste. That we after you eat a peanut butter cup. That's like crunchy peanut butter cup. Yeah. Ooh, crunchy. Takes it up a notch. Whoa, man. There's actually a lot of dark notes in there. Almost like blackberries. Blackberries with the with the uh, the peanut butter cup is like straight up what it is. Yeah. And then there's like some underlying things, but this is very complex. Man, I, you know, I kind of I kind of want to know and we might have to revisit this. If I can get some uh get some of the unaged just to see like okay now what's the barrel influence right in now now i'm curious yeah be able to see between because imagine if it was i don't know i'm just like i'm imagining like what yeah. it could be oh yeah be like wow like if you still got some like strong peanut butter notes and that kind of thing coming through i'm like man these guys were probably just hammering back then <laughs> you know and what a different time where you could drink whiskey at any time of the day because that's what just men did yeah you know <laughs> They woke, and like if you had like any kind of like pain when you woke up, they would just, um, they would take a shot of whiskey and it'd clear things up. Our friend Jay told us that when he was growing up, he had, he knew an old farmer that did a shot of whiskey every morning and every night throughout like for many, many, many years of his life. And he had like, no heart issues. He's like healthy as a horse up until like the day he, you just say your body says, okay, it's time for a day. Kicked it. Yep. Yeah. There's something to be There's said about that. There's something to be said man. about like these things in moderation, you know, but shot in the morning, like get up four in the morning. Uh, you know who, maybe they didn't brush his teeth. He just swash around. <laughs> you know, they, they probably did back. I mean, dentistry is kind of like a newer thing that's that's kind of happened in the past like you know yeah. maybe 80 years 100 years but like well that brings up a good point like maybe they used it for that kind of thing 
Like you wouldn't brush your teeth in the morning. I mean, they had like wooden toothbrush with like I don't know what the hell they had on it. Yeah, God knows. Probably like just pig like hair or something. Mint and yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Pig hair and it's like throw mint and stuff on that. Yeah, I don't know. Like that's that's an interesting thing. Like, what did they do for like just oral hygiene? Just drink whiskey and kill all bacteria? Yeah, I don't. From what I know, that I, I don't think they did much. I don't think they really had a. You know, that's why many people just didn't have teeth. You know, because they would they would fall out probably year forty. You know, they'd be gone. Because um, that was just normal though. So it, with Washington, interesting enough. Um, he had really bad teeth. Even like he had like kind of. I think they th- they're thinking had some kind of genetic thing where his teeth were just really bad anyway. And even at a young age, and that's what I, I believe I was hearing. I could be wrong. Please correct me. Um, but yeah, he had to have dentures very early age, and he was always self conscious about his mouth. Really? You know, a lot of people say that too. Like whenever you see him in like you know paintings or whatever, his mouth's closed. Mouth closed. Which, I mean, usually paintings, you don't see mouth open. Well, it's hard to be like... Yeah, like... Mm, for, for like 10 hours. Four hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah the guy's like... But, um... Yeah, dentures. Oh, but they were comfortable. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Jesus. Oh, my God. Back then? I, from what I hear, it was very, like, customary to... Like, if we were getting together to discuss anything, whether it's political stuff, whatever, going yeah. on with the country, whatever. We're doing it over some whiskey. You bet your ass you are. Yeah. And the whole founding of the country is all based on discussion and conversations that were probably had, had with whiskey. With whiskey. Or some form of alcohol. Yes. Yeah. It's kind of that it brings people together. And, and I think in every culture, every, you know, society out there, yeah. alcohol has this like unifying thing where it brings people together to, and it forces you to just sit down, breaks those barriers of, you know, if you're awkward or, you know, you, you don't want to talk to somebody. I was just saying people get together, it's like, eh, there's some, there's some other, they some get other together, pretty, getting together it goes pretty on close. Yeah. You know, you had the founding fathers talking about starting this country, you know, where it was like treason, if, you know, talking against the king and what they were going to yeah, do. Yeah. And they had all these ideas from the Enlightenment period in the 1600s, and they brought them to fruition and made it a reality. Like, democracy was, like, kind of this, like, what, what's... That was kind of like a fringe thing. It was like, that's like not, you know, democracy is like whatever. And they brought well, it to reality. So then would you say that it was, in its time, was a very progressive idea? It wasn't... It was so progressive that it wasn't progressive because it wasn't even on the radar it was like it, that's like me it was just like this is crazy yeah that's yeah. like me going into um playing football instead of using a football i'm gonna use a, a hot dog on a bun and people are gonna look at you and go what are you doing and, but you're like no really it could work <laughs> yeah so that's what i mean it's like so not you know that's kind of how it was back then how democracy or how they wanted a republic um, using democracy or democratic ideas, that's how it was. It was just so different than from what was normal, you know, with a monarchy or even a democratic monarchy, you know, kind yeah. of a constitutional monarchy as, as England was at the time. Right, It right. was different than that. It's really cool. Yeah, man. it's crazy stuff. But when you figure, like, somebody like him just, you know, everything he did, and then it's like, oh, he finishes up life making whiskey, and it's like, dude, that's pretty sweet that is he did everything for his country and for for the service of what he believed in and that's how he that's how he took it it was it was a service it wasn't necessarily something that he was like oh i'm gonna do my service and then i'm gonna get out because i want to go retire and i want to be drink just whiskey hanging out well i'm not hanging out because you're right he was into everything but you've had a few rise how does this stack up i think this stacks up it's on very top well. of the stack Dude. pretty high up on the stack I'm see. I'm also shocked because this is 43 percent alcohol. So, but it's warm. Like the fish is like warm. Like not in a bad way. Not like warm. Like oh, hot. You know, it's like it just got a nice finish. It's hanging on. It's very pleasant. Yeah. I it mean, it actually feels like warm and, and soothing. It does. It's and it's doesn't. There's no weird flavors going on. No, um, very balanced. Sometimes when you get a young whiskey, it can, can get kind of um, I always say snappy where it gets snappy. like a little fight. Yeah. My elbow doesn't hurt anymore. This does it not. It smells you. This has a great, great nose. The mouth feels great. 
and um, just all the flavors are just translating in there and that chocolate peanut butter. Wow, yeah. that is just like, I would say if, you know, even if, for anybody out there that's had it, you know, absolutely comment and let us know. But if you, it is a little, it is a little pricey. Little pricey. Okay, <laughs> it's, it's a whole lot pricey. Oh. Um, see, this is where the whole price thing comes in. Damn it. That's a whole other, I know, because it, it just a whole gets, other discussion. Yeah. It does. Pr price is like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to put it like this, buddy. Okay. Let's agree with me or disagree with me? Spend as much money as you want on whiskey because guess what? In the end, it's you spending the money. Fair enough. I mean that that and I know what you're like. It sounds a little sim simplified. Yeah. But it's like, hey, if you want to, if you can get your hands on it and try it, I think you'll be surprised. This little bottle is like 180 bucks. Yeah. But yeah. It, it is a rare thing. Three seven five for yeah. For so 180. and now just a real cool thing. My sister did pick this up for me in her journeys, which she also picked up McLaughlin, and I would have never tried McLaughlin if it yeah. wasn't for her. So this is two solid, solid uh, picks for her. Dude, she's back. Two for two right now. Dude, she is. But the bottle is 777. Oh, my. God. Which is kind of weird because I was born on 7777. So that's kind of weird. Yeah. You know what's a sign? It's like a little creepy. Yeah, it's a sign. But it's a sign. Not creepy in a bad way. It's creepy like, in a good way. Creepy in a good way. From the bourbon buddies who are now nipping on rye, the rye guys. <laughs> <laughs> the rye uddies. So, uh, cheers. Cheers.